Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to our presentation. My name is Mugit Rifai and my partner in language teaching. The first part, log in language teaching, will be presented by me, and for the other parts, wikis and podcasts will be presented by Irma Bahtiar. This presentation will talk about six topics. The first one is the introduction to blog, and the second one is types of blog, third one is functionalities, and then next is benefits, uh, number five is things to consider, and the last one is using blogs. Now let's begin with the one. What is blog? Blog is originally uh, originated from the word web blog. So the characteristic is like uh, uh, the concept of, of blog is actually a web-based or diary or journal. And the main characteristic, characteristic of this uh, blog is that the postings posts are presented from the most recent to older posts. This has been applied by various media, so, social media application like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course uh, blog platforms like Blogger, WordPress, and then Tumblr and so on. Now, there are different types of blog in language teaching. The first one is called EduBlog. EduBlog is a kind of blog that is used in education. It can be about uh, things we talk about in education and uh, also current issues in education. And there are other types like TutorBlog. A TutorBlog is a blog set up and maintained by a teacher, while a student blog is a blog set up and maintained by a learner. And the last one, a class blog, is a blog used by the entire class. So not only by one teacher or one student, it is used by the whole class members. And apart from the types of blog I have mentioned before, there are also different types of common blogs we uh, can see. Like the first one is the video blog, or uh, we also know it as blog. And then uh, the video blog usually consists of videos. And then the next one is photo blog, which usually consists of, of course, photos. And the last one is audio blog, consists of audios, um, audio files. Now, what are they for? If you talk about uh, blogs, language teaching, there are different kind of uh, uses or functionalities we can use from uh, having them. The first one from the tutor blog, we can use them for setting homework. Uh, the next one, provi providing a summary of classwork. Then we can also use it for providing links to extra reading or listening materials, for question and answer, for exam study tips, and so on. And then for student blog, we can use it for uh, personal and family information, including photos. And then we can also extra writing practice on class topics. We can have regular comment on current affairs, then research and present information on a topic, or a photo blog on learners' class blog. We can use it for reactions to a film, article, class topic, or current affairs. We can also, we can also use it for uh, things that learners like or don't like doing in class. Or we can also use it as a class project on any topic. What are the benefits? There are two main benefits of using blogs in language teaching. The first one is that it can provide a real-world tool to practice writing English. Because when we uh, post something on our blog, we actually uh, writing, practicing our writing in English. And the next one, it can also be become the means of communication with other learners in other parts of the world. When we have a blog, and uh, the blog is published, everyone can access it and everyone can um, visit and give comments. And when uh, people from other parts of the world give comments and be uh, the means of communication.
Now, what are things to consider before we actually uh, use blogs in our language teaching? The first one is uh, related to correction. This is because blogs are uh, mostly used for writing exercises, so we can uh, try to consider these things. First, when we ask students to uh, post something on their blog, we can have them prepare blog entries in word processing software like Microsoft Words before we actually uh, have them post it on blogs. And then before they uh, post it, we can also encourage peer review before the publication. And then we should also give them enough time for writing, then reviewing, redrafting, and then checking. So when the uh, post is public or is published, they can have uh, a very good one so that it can be accurate and also uh, have a good quality of writing. And then the next one for assessment, first we need to clarify the criteria to the learners in advance before we give them the uh, exercise, we give them the, uh, the task, the assignment, we have to, we have to give them to clarify the criteria to the learners. So what uh, are we going to assess? Like for example, accuracy or grammar, or word choice and something like that. And then in addition to the criteria for traditional writing assessment, include other criteria specified for this electronic medium. Like for, the, for example, uh, the uh, choose of font and also uh, the size and uh, uh, additional picture. Now, in using a blog, there are at least four phases here. First, you need to set up a sample blog, and then next, set up student blogs, and then the third one, uh, ask them to post and visit other blogs, and then the last one is follow up. Now, when we set up a sample blog, we can use either of these blog platforms, like we have Blogger, WordPress, Tumblr, Wix, and, and so on. Now, what to do before we set up a sample blog? First, we need to do it before the class begins, so that we can uh, have them ready when we start the class. Do it before class, then don't forget to include information about yourself. This is usually in the uh, about section. Next, uh, we uh, we need to consider including other stuff that if we want our students to have uh, writings, then we need to put some writings on our blogs and also etc. Why? You can use this step to familiarize ourselves with the blogs and how it works and also to provide a model for the learners. Next, when uh, we want to set up a student blog, first, we need to show the sample blog, the one that we made uh, by ourselves. And then we can also give comprehension questions to check the learner's understanding. And finally, help them set up their blogs. We can do it either individually, in pairs, or groups. How? We can put the learners in pairs or group. Uh, so that uh, when uh, the other members are having trouble, so one of them can uh, explain. And when available, we can also use a projector to guide the setup step by step. So we can show them uh, directly from our uh, device. Now for the next phase hosting and visiting. We uh, set up the blog. We can ask learners to post some articles or photos in the blogs and then encourage them to share the, ad the address of their blogs when they have uh, enough articles. Mm -hmm. Then as they uh, uh, share the, the address of their blogs, we can also encourage them to visit each other's blogs and post comments. 
Another alternative is when we use class blog, we can encourage learners to read each other's articles and post comments. So instead of um, visiting each other's blog, we can visit the same blog by reading different articles from different uh, writers and we can give each other some comments. And then the next, the last task, the last, the last phase is following up. Uh, to follow up, first we need to encourage learners to post regularly, like for example for a semester for, or, or for a term. And then uh, we should also provide ideas and suggestions for the content. And um, you can keep the blog as an internal class project or we can also encourage learners from other classes to visit and post comments. Alternatively, the teachers can join an international network of teachers and get learners from others to visit and comment on the students' blogs. This is uh, uh, another way that we can use blogs as the means of communication. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. That's from me. Next will be presented by Irma. Assalamualaikum.